I am a student of Zen master Dogen, 13th century Japanese monk who brought uh, Zen teaching from China to Japan and then started the monastic tradition um, in Japan. And then later um, it is called Soto School. So one of the two uh, major schools of Zen along with uh, Rinzai. <coughs> I've been translating his work uh, for more than 50 years. So publishing some uh, books, um, starting with uh, Moon in a Dewdrop, and recently uh, Treasury of the True Dharma Eye, his life work. So Dogen's teaching is, um, I think any kind of Zen teaching is, uh, came from the uh, Chinese Taoist, but also uh, Buddhist tradition, which came from India, which also started from uh, <coughs> Vedic tradition along with uh, other traditions in Buddhism and Hinduism. And uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, non-duality is an important, uh, most basic part of his teaching. And Dogen especially is uh, very clear about um, inseparableness of practice and then enlightenment. So uh, uh, he has a concept of circle of the way, which is in every moment of our practice, um, we experience four elements, uh, aspiration for enlightenment, practice, enlightenment, and nirvana. Nirvana can mean uh, many things uh, according to uh, different teachers, different traditions. But for Dogen, it means a non-dual experience. So his idea is that uh, each moment we experience aspiration, practice, enlightenment, and non-dual experience. So that's good news. Every moment of our practice is uh, enlightenment. Bad news is that uh, we usually are not aware of it and then think about pains or uh, sleepiness or thinking of some other things and then think that we, we had a bad meditation experience. But uh, Dogen never talks about uh, bad meditation, bad zazen. Um, for him, every moment when we take a uh, form of an awakened one and then practice, that is full uh, awakening. So, uh, according to Dogen's teaching, in meditation, the distinction between large and small, um, others and then the self, uh, momentariness and timelessness, life and death, becomes uh, rather obscure and uh, insignificant. And uh, that is uh, non-dual experience. <clears throat> I, um, I myself feel that um, dualism, that means think, uh, to s see things as two. Two means many, I guess, you know. Um, 
and non-dualism to see things not separate or maybe one. There's some kind of uh, huge difference between one and the not separate, but uh, not separate is one in a way, arguably. So I like to call this um, kind of dualism and non-dualism pluralism because we are talking about dualism as kind of seeing things many. So pluralism may be more accurate and then non-dualism uh, singularism. But maybe uh, <coughs> with all respect uh, non-dualism is fine. You have this conference. <coughs> well, the uh, reality is uh, maybe uh, is whole, and then, but our consciousness, we uh, we divide them, and then we uh, that's how we uh, function every day. Language and then intellect uh, is. Um, by nature, dualistic. So, um, we experience our uh, normal experiences dualistic. So there is certainly duality, and then um, <coughs> there is, through this uh, dualistic thinking, we uh, we experience non-duality. They may not be separate and they cannot be separated, but we separate them. So there is separation. We cannot deny separation. 